RealAgriculture.com presents Farming Forward. Sharpen your soil health expertise with cover cropping, nitrogen management, and advanced grazing. Brought to you by the Farm Resilience Mentorship Program. Anytime somebody tries something new or changes what they're doing, there has to be a reason why. The concept of why also applies to cover crops. And on this episode of Farming Forward, we're going to hear from Chris Nichols as she fills us in on the work she's doing exploring the why behind cover crops as an agronomic and environmental solution. So I am a soil scientist. Uh, technically, I'm a soil microbiologist with Food Water Wellness Foundation. And what I'm doing is trying to connect what happens below ground with what's happening above ground for us to actually implement practices such as cover cropping. Okay, so one of our focuses here is the why of cover crops. Mm -hmm. So we want to touch a bit on, like you said, connecting those. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yes. So when we're talking about connecting those, the first thing that I want to point out as we are out here uh, in the middle of September, we have some plants that have already gone through senescence and we have some plants that are still green and growing. And one of the big things that we want to do with cover cropping is help to extend our growing season so that we can put more carbon below ground to feed the soil biology. Now, talk about the living roots down under the ground as well. What, what, what do they do for biodiversity? So when you've got, especially the diversity of the different types of roots that you have, you have different root architecture, different root sizes that are going to be tapping into different areas within the soil profile. And in doing that, they're going to be able to get to those different points in the soil profile where there's water and there's nutrients and create some more of the open space that you have in that environment. You're also getting those different types of carbon compounds again that can basically allow for different types of nutrients to be released at different times. Just like us, plants have different needs at different times and different plants will have different needs. So one of the things that we find when we have diverse uh, living roots below ground is you can have some plants that will be more associated with things like nitrogen fixing bacteria and they will then not just provide that nitrogen for that particular plant but that nitrogen can flow through the mycorrhizal fungi to another plant and the mycorrhizal fungi can also help to access more phosphorus to do more nitrogen fixation all of these things helping to kind of build that structure that it is that we're looking for through the soil. We're creating a huge soil food web and a huge network that is going to be um, operating below ground. And, and so I can imagine this potentially alters your fertilizer requirements at, after some time. Talk about the importance of soil testing then if you are using... I mean, soil testing is important at any time, but especially when you're using cover crops. The really important p point with what the cover crops help the microbial community do is those nutrients are given to the plant when the plant needs them. Oftentimes in our cropping systems, we'll give nutrients to the plant when it works for us as operators. When it is that we have the time or the equipment, when the plant's at a certain growth stage, but the plant has its highest nutrient demands as it's starting to go through the reproductive phase. And that's oftentimes when we can't get onto the fields to be able to add fertility to that system. And so what ends up happening is the plant's are really starving for nutrients. And if they don't have that microbial community to help to get access to those nutrients, they're not gonna be able to produce enough seed. They're not gonna be able to produce enough forage and especially the quality of the forage, making things like more complex biomolecules, proteins and enzymes and antioxidants and polyphenolics, all of the things that we're looking for from the food that is going either into us or into the animals. So from your research, what is the most misunderstood thing about cover crops? I think the most misunderstood thing about cover crops is that, like with many of the tools that we're trying to put into place, we think that it's only going to be a tool that can fit at this particular time or in this particular place. And 
because there are so many options and opportunities with what types of cover crops you could use, the different types of plants, the um, opportunities to use it as a forage crop in the early part of the season, what we're really trying to do with cover cropping is look at your system and identify when there are some issues and what you're trying to address with those issues. And then you compare how you are using your cover crop to be able to do that. But so oftentimes, like I said, people think, well, I can only use a cover crop if I have a short season crop and I harvest it early enough so that I can plant the cover crop before winter and get it in. It has to be this height in order to be able to be functionally active and to add a benefit. And what we see, especially looking below ground, is even plants that are this high, we can see that they are actually providing carbon below ground to the microbial community. So trapping ourselves into that idea that it's too late in the season for me to put in cover crops is not something that we should be focusing on. And again, we're in the middle of September and we've got green plants growing here. We've got these options to be able to extend our growing season utilize the resources most efficiently and have that happen. And if we get ourselves too in a box, too framed within that box, it's gonna be difficult for us to be able to figure out how to utilize cover crops to our best benefit. And everybody has a different benefit. Absolutely. Is, is there ever a time when you maybe should not add cover crops to your rotation? Um, I don't think that there's a time when you shouldn't add cover crops to the rotation. I think that what you do need to do is definitely look at one, what it is that you're trying to address with utilizing the cover crops and be picking your plants appropriately that you're putting into the cover crop mixture. Um, oftentimes one of the issues that we will run into is that, um, producers will want to use, you know, the highest diversity mix, and then you don't always see all of those plants growing. And that can be frustrating because you invested in the seed, you invested in putting it in the ground, and if it's not going to grow, why did you do that? So really be thinking judiciously about the plants that you're putting in and what it is that you're trying to address. The other thing is, is that oftentimes, and as we've looked at some of the soils throughout um, the province of Alberta, we've seen some issues with some very high nitrogen concentrations in the soil. And so looking at your carbon and nitrogen ratio is going to help you to understand because what we want to do all the time is increase the amount of nitrogen that we have in our soil. So we're going to put in a lot of legumes in our cover crop mix, and that's not really going to help us because they're actually not going to fix nitrogen if there's so much ni too much nitrogen in the soil. There's a chemical process in which it's it basically that process of doing the nitrogen fixation gets impeded when there's too much nitrogen in the soil. So we want to look at our carbon to nitrogen ratio. You want to look to, you may be looking at cover crops with large tap roots that you want because you have issues with compaction. If you use a lot of large tap root types of plants in your cover crop, one of the issues with those large tap roots is they don't have a lot of biomass and foliage, and so they're not going to be covering the soil very well. And those large tap roots, I think of this as if you've got an issue with compaction, and you'll use a large tap root to try and break through that issue of compaction that you have in your soil, it's like taking down a very uh, well-built wall. And if you just take a sledgehammer and pound it into one spot in the wall, the wall is not going to fall down very easily. But if you go through and you make a lot of, punch a lot of holes in different places in the wall, it's going to be easier for you to take down that wall. And the large tap roots are that one big punch. So oftentimes if you do put in a tap root crop and you pull that up, so if you put in something like radishes or turnips or something like that, or you pull up the roots of any type of a tap root, whether it's your alfalfa, whatever type of tap root, and you see that it bends and curves, you know that it wasn't able to take all of the energy it put into that one big punch and make it through that compaction layer. So having a mixture that's going to be having uh, coarse roots that you would have associated with some of the grass species, um, with some of the other plant species that you could have in the mixture that are going to put those little pinholes in that layer of compaction. And then you can have that tap root that's going to help to punch through all of those little pinholes. And that's going to be far more effective. So oftentimes, again, with cover crops, it's, it's, we see an issue and we think that 
we're going to decide this cover crop is going to help us to solve our issue, but we don't think about the consequences and the full context of the system in determining what's going to happen with utilizing those various species. The only other thing that I would like to add is I would like to, again, encourage everyone to take a look at their soil, dig holes, and I would love everyone to be able to take advantage of that. If you enjoyed this video and want to continue to sharpen your soil health expertise, I encourage you to go to farmlearninghub.ca to learn more.